satellite to this. And we don't. <laughs> and that's our problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's so why a gem that, shell. So why is that so difficult to resolve? Um, well, it takes time to, to make it. What we do have, because of the vagaries of rehearsal schedules, is we have a gem and a satellite by Will and Kevin. But it doesn't link up to Kathleen. So we can't pass this across the space. And that's what, we're, what we need to resolve now. Okay? And tomorrow we'll maybe see how you resolve it. Yes. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in this large room to get distance so that I can see the dancers left to right all in one take, one look. And um, we were working yesterday on the Rishikar in three parts. And it, uh, my grand plan for how the gem would pass satellite material on to another person forming a couple, person forming a couple, and on down the line, did work, except that spatially it was dead. What I f finally realized is wrong is that the counterpoints are going full tilt, and Bach can easily just play the theme at that moment. Um, but for us to stop and go into a, a, a slow movement is incorrect dynamically. Stay higher, Keith. That's good. Okay. Okay, good. Good idea. Um, Will has just proposed that you take um, Stanford's satellite slide left, men. I had it in mind that Kathleen and, and uh, Kevin would arc up in that direction, as you've been doing, Kevin. Not necessarily with the material you've been doing it with, but um, could I see if Stanford, um, if you moved into relation to Di, doing the arms of the gym? Well, right now, I am beginning to explore material that we have in our inventory of possibilities and, uh, to find well, what is suitable for them to do to maintain the momentum that is um, pushing them into this fourth section. And have you got an inkling of how it, how it might go? Uh, I don't have, I, no, I don't have no idea how it's going to go, but it, I refuse to allow it not to go extremely well. So that's why we're hooked up here. Stanford, if you did the equivalent of the serpentine alongside Di, articulating the arms from the regular theme, okay. it's a task. And, and perhaps get downstage closer to her. Okay. Like to, to take the beginning coming forward so that you get close to her and then, then ride on her going stage left. Ready? And. Keep going. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Your link, Stanford, you're doing beautifully. Your link is to Will. It's very exciting you're to watch her compose, by the way, to see the way she cuts and juxtaposes themes that she already has, that the dancers have learned, say the A theme or the B theme, or it, maybe it's got a name, you know, and saying, start with this. Now, you jump into the B and at that point, you, could you jump into the B, but further on at this point? And so she's making, she's mixing it, mixing these ingredients in this rather startling stew of dancers. Have you watched her do that? I have. I, you know, it was, I could hardly sit still. It was so exciting because, you know, the dancers are extraordinary and they could, could follow what she's saying. And it's like, you know, and, you're, you're, and she's making choices. She's saying, no, not that. And, and you're thinking, wait a minute, that was beautiful. And she's already off trying a new combination of ingredients. 
And so she gets that strange shadowing but not quite shadowing, copying but not quite copying, movement traveling, movement you see here suddenly reappearing over there. Stanford, do you need someone else's legs? Um, Would that help? Maybe. Yeah. That would be great. Who, Kevin, can you give him some legs? Sure. Yeah. Let, let me to explain yeah. to you, Mark, Actually that I've asked Stanford to keep his arms like Diane is downstage, which are in fact the same arms as Will, but Will has different legs. Will has, you say different legs. What do you mean? he has the lower half of the body from another phrase and the upper half from uh, the gem. So I've asked Stanford to laminate the, the gem arms to uh, another phrase that will match up with Will's legs so that he can dance with two people um, being in unison with the upper body of this one and the lower body of that one. You guys ready? So that's what you want to see, Tricia? Yes, I would actually. Fifty-two, fifty-one, one fifty-one, fifty. Okay. Okay, good guys. We're very close to the next entry. So can we do this again, please? When you sanitize or purify a phrase of human emotion and um, uh, look, feel, because we dancers are people, and we are people in a culture at work. And we have um, a, a plan, which is our choreography, and um, uh, dance out of um, a tremendous uh, continuity of ensemble, rehearsed through repetitions over long periods of time, uh, only moving with the amount of uh, muscle power it takes to precisely move to a precise place. So that I think we are very visible as people and that through that comes emotion. When I'm dancing, I totally experience so much. I, I, I hyper experience, I'm um, a study in emotion. But if it's not associated to a narrative, people sometimes, that evades them, but it's there. <laughs> But I go upstage or do I go do I'll go downstage. I'm sorry, you're right. Okay. I'm going there. Yeah. And sorry. Let's come up. Three, four, five. I think I was supposed to go upstage of you there. You're right. It was my mistake. I should have moved this way. I'm learning a solo right now. Actually, we're making a duet, which is a reworking of a solo that she did herself last year called uh, If You Couldn't See Me. And now uh, the major premise of the work, as I understand, was to develop a, a way of moving and a, a performance presence wherein the audience never saw her face or the front of her body. And she says it would go deeper into the articulation of her back. Well, she agreed to let me learn the other half, which would be only the front of the body. So um, we're like, flip sides of a coin. What's really happening is that I'm reorganizing everything I know about <laughs> my weight, my um, level of, of exp expressivity, um, locating new areas of uh, initiation for movement, how to initiate and then to uh, let something take its natural course, great deal of listening. And we do have interesting conversations, but uh, she's which I think is a intellectual, but she's not, she doesn't talk a lot about her work while she's working. And I think that part of my attraction to her has been uh, what I see coming out of her muscles. I am sometimes interested in knowing about the mind and even the personality.
uh, behind it. Today she told me a touching story about her three different epics she feels she's been through as a dancer, and one of them happened after her mother was dying, and she felt that she did a transference where she felt that she was dying. And when she realized that she wasn't dying, she began to move in a different way. I found that very human and very important for me to know about a woman who seems like a powerhouse of systems architecture, to see the, uh, the poetry in her life and what issues she's, she's been wrestling with. Well, it, it isn't totally a dance studio, but uh, it will be a sprung floor and a small area where I could um, work out myself and um, work on some movement ideas and also bring one or two dancers and, and, and work on a small section of something or, or new material. Um, and the reason I did that was that I didn't want the lack of a dance studio to keep me from coming out here. I didn't want to be kept in the city in my uh, official dance studio. So I made something very modest that um, gives me the freedom to be here. What are you thinking about, Tricia? Oh, just the myriad forms and shapes of things. Like the straight edge of this rock, or the uh, fragility of these shells that are here, just heaped up against, washed up against the p uh, pilings, and the sound that they make when you run your hand through them. And, a variety of colors, just a miraculous variety of colors. The color of this particular stone, and there's another one down on the bulkhead, I think is just amazing. Brown and uh, it's so it's so deep, the, the red and the brown in it. I've had my eye on it for a full year, and I haven't picked one up to start to collect it yet. And so it's gotten this close to me. We'll see. What are you going to do with it? Um, well, you don't have to do anything with it. I do have a project, however, on the top of my uh, wood-burning stove. It's right now covered with very plain gray stones. And I thought as soon as I filled that surface with gray, I could begin to introduce another color in lines, in shapes of some kind, sporadically, and that eventually it would go completely to the color of the next choice. Well, when I think of the, the difference between organic, the organic surrounds of the country and the um, impressions that I have spinning my page and getting things in, into different spatial orientations, Trisha's piece is not finished, and the light cannot be finished until the piece is finished. Uh, what Trisha has said is that it probably won't be finished even in Brussels. There is some parts of it that she doesn't, she, you know, where the music plays and she intends to have movement there, and there is no movement now. But also, I think the movement is growing in layers. There'll be more and more detail filled out in the parts where there is movement now. And uh, I think that, and hope that will be true of the light as well. Of course, some kind of final version will uh, happen in, in Brussels. It has to, there is a performance. So, uh, that in itself is a kind of statement. <laughs>